Gantier. I thought, he said of the wife who lasted six months before the news of this treachery of the blood, before he lay on his back, the bottles of toxic drugs and poison for rats lined up on his sill, before the simple equation of fatigue with this world plus a body falling to ruin, a heart shattered by a woman's laughter. Before all this, she had left that wife, that angel, the woman of beauty who knew her beauty. I thought, he said, she was an angel, but she wasn't, as sometimes happens. But now, he smiled that lazy trickster's grin, his amber eyes sparkling. He has found his archangel, and this is how a cliché for the pop song becomes the hymn for saints. She came and saved him, the way archangels come into a room, not asking permission, walking in as if they have an army of angels at their command, wingless, they arrive like the scent of incense, fill your breath and place a hand on you, and you fall in line. This is bigger than love. A book, an apocryphal book with chapter and verse could be written about this thing. The voice of God, the commanding mystery of celestial beings sacrificed to be the mates of the flesh, weak humans. She is this archangel with a wound in her body, as if the whole thing was planned. I will place a curse on you, something haunting like leprosy would have been, had they not found its cure. Something reserved for the damned, they say. That thing you must whisper in the shadow of crannies where thin bodies lie sprawled out straining for air. I will let her carry this in her, and then I will command you to carry her, take her as your wife, and you will learn how much bigger than desire this thing is, how much wider than hunger. He looked at her, lying here on her stomach, on that mattress covered in a white sheet out there on the porch where the air is cooler, and she, dressed in her pink shirt skirt suit, looking at him, having fed him, given him water to drink, poured water for his hands. And he said, I do not deserve her. Her name should be Grace. I do not deserve this shelter. And I ask her all the time, why do you love me? And she says, it is bigger than me and you. And that is all she says. Maybe a man must always wait to touch the flesh of an archangel. A man must come to the body of an archangel as to an altar. A man must not let the light in her eyes fool him into thinking this is ordinary flesh. A man must wait to marry her properly, give her a ring, give her the laughter of a family gathered. A man must do all these things before he falls prostrate before the body of an archangel who does not even know she is divine, except in the way a vessel knows it is set aside for pure water. Love is desperate like this. For those who have come away from the cataclysm of dust and stone, those who have come to know the ending of things, those who live as if tomorrow is not promised. This is how love is for those cursed with the love of archangels. <laughs> <laughs>